Hi, it's Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky again with my plans and pans. I'm here in my kitchen and my husband Bob is the videographer once again. We are sheltering in place together um, along with Eleanor and Franklin who are at my feet, the dogs. They like to be at my feet when I'm in the kitchen in case something might fall to their benefit. Um, and so I wanted to talk to you a bit about food. This is a, a time when lots of people are struggling not only to get to have the money to purchase the food and that's why the SNAP program is so very important. We used to call it the food stamp program and it is for well actually about 20 million children are on the program about 11 million people with disabilities and about 5 million lower income elderly people depend on the SNAP program. But at this time, when people are supposed to stay at home, how do you get the food? Or if you live in a food desert, a neighborhood where there really aren't grocery stores, even if you could go out, how do you get that food? Well, there is a program, a pilot program that's being run in six states right now called the Online Purchasing Program. And this allows people to order their food online from a retailer, from a grocery store, and have it delivered. And imagine how great that would be for the many people who just feel that they can't or shouldn't go out to get the food to them. So I organized a, a letter to the Secretary of Agriculture, Secretary Purdue, to ask him to make it universal in our country. Um, this was, uh, the, the letter was signed by the members of the task force on aging and families, which I'm a co-founder of. Um, and we sent this letter in the hope that we could expand the access to food for so many more Americans. I want to talk to you about a couple of other things. So you know that the um, Republicans have asked for another $250 billion for the, uh, payroll, um, uh, the, the payroll protection program, the PPP program, um, which is for small businesses to be able to keep their employees on the, the payroll. Well, we agree that we certainly need more because many of you out there may have uh, applied for that. It was not an easy application form. But the other problem is that it has run out of, it's going to run out of money in a couple of days. So we need more money. But we want to do some other things as well as Democrats. And so I just wanted to tell you quickly some of the things that we are negotiating right now with the Republicans. So we want the $250 billion uh, in assistance to small businesses, but we want to be sure that half of that, 125 billion, is channeled through community-based financial institutions that serve farmers and families and women and minorities and veteran-owned small businesses uh, and nonprofits in rural and tribal and suburban uh, America. So we want to make sure that there's access to that program by a broader range of Americans. We want $100 billion for hospitals and community health centers and health systems um, to provide the desperately needed resources, including what we call the PPEs, personal protective equipment. Um, that's the E. Um, and we want $150 billion for state and local governments. You know, we have heard about money going to the states and not enough that is actually going to some of the frontline people in the communities. I've talked to every one of my mayors in my suburban communities and they all say we are starving for more money. We want to help our first responders to get the PPEs, the personal protective equipment that they, that they need. Um, and so um, that is what is on our uh, negotiating, that's our negotiating position 
for the, the next bill, that would actually double the $250 billion to about $500 billion. Um, and we hope we can get that done. And finally, um, 23 different chairmen of our committees um, condemned the White House, the President of the United States, for attacking um, what, uh, the, the um, Inspector Generals over and over again. You know, we created a committee to, that called the Pandemic Response um, Accountability Committee. And the president on Monday decided to fire the newly appointed chairman of that committee. He had formerly been the inspector general of the Defense Department, and now he's fired. Also on Monday, he decided to attack the principal um, deputy inspector general of the Department of Health and Human Services. Why? Because she complained, uh, or she commented, not complained, but commented on the shortages of necessary equipment at hospitals. That's why. And we all remember when he fired the Inspector General of the Intelligence Committee because he had the nerve to report to the Intelligence Committee about the, um, what do we call it, about the whistleblower that was um, talking about the um, Ukraine deal um, to attack his, uh, the, the president's opponent, Joe Biden. So that's his response when he uh, doesn't like someone. He said that the chairman of this oversight committee, the person that was, res was responsible now for making sure that there weren't um, price gouging, overcharging, um, and that all the um, oversight was handled properly, he said, well, he's no Trump fan. Well, I guess that's reason enough to fire people. And so we need to make sure that we set up what Nancy Pelosi has called um, a select committee to make sure that members of Congress also are involved in a bipartisan way of doing oversight now, because I want to tell you that this coronavirus has created opportunities for some to price gouge right now, to make a lot of money, to make profit on this disaster. You know, so many Americans are suffering, but there are a handful that see it as a way that they can get money from the American people. And we have to stop that, and I think we can. Um, we're gonna be diligent in doing this oversight. This week on Tuesday, we saw an incredible injustice. Um, it went to the Supreme Court, who helped decide that Wisconsin had to have its primary on that day, even though the governor had said that it was gonna be postponed in order for people to be able to vote later in the, uh, in the year. Well, we need to pass legislation that makes it possible for all people in the United States to vote by mail. Um, and it's easy to do, and many states do it. And this is the time when we need to protect our democracy and the precious, the very precious right to vote, which is being, which is being challenged. And of course, the people on Tuesday that you may have seen on television some were social distancing, but a lot of them were in lines that were pretty long and they were closer than they should be. And let's hope that nobody gets sick and dies because the Supreme Court ruled that they had to have that election on last Tuesday. So there are a lot of reasons. There are people who never can find it easy to go to the polls. But all of us should have the opportunity to vote by mail. And we're going to insist that that happen. I also want to remind you once again that you should stay home, that you should wash your hands, 
Uh, we got some new um, hand sanitizer today. We found some that was for sale, a small jar, a small bottle of it. And so um, let's be all safe. At this holiday season, um, we're going to have a um, Zoom Seder tomorrow night for Passover. And I know this is holiday week. Today is Good Friday and Sunday is Easter. And Ramadan is starting soon. So this is a special time for families. Hope that you'll be able to enjoy them. Mostly stay healthy, be well. Thank you, I'll see you next week. Thank you for watching my video. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook where my handle is at Jan Schakowsky.